In this video, we're going to take the JSON web token authorization that we just built into our REST API, and we're going to modify the Angular app that we have so that it is aware of these web tokens and it makes uh, requests to our REST API by passing back the token, um, allowing the user to log in and um, essentially stay logged in. So the problem, the first problem that we have to solve here is we're going to need to allow the user to log in and get a token. And then we're somehow going to need to have to hang on to that token. So in the examples that I was doing previously, we were just sort of copying and pasting the token into our headers manually. But that's not really going to work for what we want to do here. So we have a number of options of what we could do. The token is going to be returned to us. If you'll recall, our um, our login route passes the token back on the the JSON response that we get when you successfully log in. So we need to grab that token and we need to make use of it. So what could we do? Well, we could. Um, we could put the token in some kind of a session artifact, like put it in, you know, use it in a cookie or have it stored in uh, a session. But with our Angular app, it's really all happening in the client side. It's all in the browser. So, you know, you just have static resources. There really isn't, we're not going back and forth to a server. So that's not really going to work. We could put it on the URL. So we could put it in a query string. But that's really dangerous because URLs get logged in all kinds of servers. And remember that these JSON web tokens are basically like passwords. You know, you don't want to um, have them floating around where it's easy to acquire them. You want to make sure you want to be careful with how how you're using them. So another thing that we could do is we could stick the token into some kind of storage on the client side. So browsers provide a whole bunch of different storage options. And the one I'm going to use today is local storage. And basically, local storage is key value storage that lets you store strings. So if I wanted to put a, an item into local storage using a key name of my cat and a value of Tom, this is the string that goes in. I can then pull it out later on by requesting this key name. I can delete keys. I can clear keys, etc. So we could use local storage as a way of holding on to a token which would last beyond the length of the particular session. So if our user closes their browser, for example, local storage is still going to be there when they reopen the, the browser to keep working on the app, you know, a couple days later, and they still have this token. So we could still reuse this token. I mean, another thing we could do is we could just hold it in memory and not, you know, make it so that you have to log in every single time you use the app. So you have to decide how secure you're going to be versus how much of a pain you're going to be for your users. And there's a trade off. It's it, it sucks to have to log in all the time from a user's point of view. But from a security point of view, it's wonderful. Like it, you know, you're always making sure that things um you're making sure that people are who they say they are and, and you're not running a lot of risk with the token. So what we're going to do with putting the token into local storage, everything you do with these tokens is controversial. <laughs> um, if you go researching this, the thing I will say is you have to be very, very careful because anything that's in local storage is accessible to JavaScript that's running in the same origin as your app. So if we put something into our local storage for this app, for this origin, you know, currently I'm on localhost 4200, but when you put it in production or whatever, you just have to be careful that other JavaScript that is being run in the same origin, you trust it, that it's not going to try and steal your tokens and do something with them because these are passwords. And so you want to definitely be running over a secure origin, HTTPS, and using some of the deployment techniques we talked about in a previous week where you're, you're automatically getting HTTPS deployments is really important. You want to be really careful about third party JS that you include, um, you know, that you know what you're combining your code with, etc. OK, so um, let's look at the machinery for for how this would work. So the the thing, the first thing that I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna make use of a module that is gonna help me take care of essentially putting my token onto requests to the, um, the routes that I'm gonna hit on my Bridges API. So the way that you do this in, in Angular is you can use what are called HTTP interceptors, and it allows you to automatically you know, modify or do something to an HTTP request that's going out. So when you're working with HTTP client and so on, you can do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this into my, let's, Let's install this module, Auth0 Angular JWT. What this is gonna allow me to do is make some modifications to my apps. Let's just find this here. So my app module, I'm going to be able to make some modifications here to uh, to the way this works. So what I want to do is I want to pull in a few things. So I want to pull in this JWT module from uh, Auth0. How come it's there? It is. Auth0 slash Angular JWT. And why are you unhappy with me? Okay. So what I'll do is I'm gonna add a new import down here. So I'm pulling in the HTTP client module, which is how I'm doing my request, but I'm also gonna I'm gonna specify that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the JWT module for root, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna configure this thing such that, let me just show you the way this code works. So what you really have to do is you have to define a function, a, a get token function, and the get, to, the token getter function. So essentially you need to tell you need to tell this thing where to go to find your token. So if the token exists, this injector will take care of putting it into the requests the way it's supposed to be put in there. You just have to tell it how to get it. So for our purposes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out of local storage, assuming it's there. If it's not there, then we can't use it. But if it is there, then we'll be able to use it. So I'm gonna say token uh, getter is equal to a function and this function is gonna return local storage dot get item. And I'm just gonna call mine token like that. And the other thing that you can do is you can specify which domains need this. Um, so for example here, like the domains that need to have this token injected into them when you're doing requests. In this case, it would be for all of them that are going to example.com. The idea being, if your app is hitting a bunch of different domains, you don't wanna be including this token for any domains that don't need it. Like, I don't wanna send it to Google. I don't wanna send it if I'm downloading fonts. I don't wanna send it if I'm, like whatever else I'm doing, I don't wanna send this token along. So what we could do is we could say, let's only do it when we're sending it to our, to the, um, our API URL. So remember in a previous uh, discussion, we said um, we're gonna we're gonna put our API URL into the environment so it's configurable so that in production we could use one and we could use some different domain than we use in uh, you know in our development version of this. So what I'm gonna do is in my app module, I'm gonna pull in the environment so that I can make use of it. So I'm gonna import uh, the environment from I'll pull in the environment. And then down here, what I can do is I can say allowed domains is equal to an array. And inside this array, I basically just want to get like here it's example.com. 
what I want to do for my case is I want to grab whatever the origin is here. Like, you know, I want to, I want to get localhost 3000 for, for this thing. So how can I do that? So if you, in a, you know, in a browser, browsers can do this for you. Like um, you can say, if I have a new URL, I could say HTTP colon localhost 3000 API. So if you look at what this gives me back, the data that I want is I want the host information. So really what I want to do is I want to parse that URL and then get the host like that. So we could do that in our code. We could say, let's make a new URL and we'll use the environment.api URL and we'll grab the host uh, portion of that, like so. So now we're, we've configured an injector for JSON web tokens. It's going to look for them inside the token key of local storage. And if it's there, it'll put it onto the it'll put it onto the authorization header as a bearer token. And it's only going to do this for, um, you know, uh, requests that are going out to the host portion of our API URL. So it's going to skip any other domains that, you know, like we're not going to need to send this far and wide. It's going to be fairly limited in where it goes. Okay. So the next thing that I need to do is I need a service to help me manage all the authentication stuff. Because in a minute, I need to write a login form so you can you send in your username and password and um, get logged into the system, get the token. But I'm going to move the management of that token and of the user information into its own service. So what I'll do is I will, um, I'm going to generate a new service. I'll call it auth. And that produced this new file for me, auth service. Let me save this. Uh, that's good. Okay, so let's let's work with this auth service. So auth service is going to do a few things. So I need to be able to. Um, I want to work with uh, HTTP client because I need to be able to make a request to log into my service from. Angular uh, common HTTP. And what else do I need? I'm going to need to grab the observable RxJS. I'm going to need the uh, JWT helper service from the uh, auth zero angular jwt okay let's start there that's probably good okay so let's inject a couple of dependencies so i'm gonna need http client and i'm also gonna need the jwt helper Like so. So this JWT helper is coming from this same uh, Angular JWT package, and it has a number of useful features um, for decoding tokens, checking on the expiry date of tokens, checking if a token has expired, all those sorts of things. Okay, so let's write a few, let's write a few things to help us here. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, I want to say, let's add a get token function, turns a string, 
and I want it to do the same thing that we did in our uh, injector. I'm going to return local storage dot get item token. So that if I need to work with the token, I can. And okay, so let's let's add a login method. So login login needs to take information about a user. So that means I need I need to be able to work with users. I don't have any concept of a user in my system. So let's add let's add a new uh, let's add a new, whoops, class called user. So I'll export a class called user and a user always has a username. A user might have a full name and a user might have a password in the sense that um, I want to reuse this user type in a couple of different scenarios and um, the I, I'll have one or the other of the other two, but I won't necessarily have all three. So I'm just going to mark them optional. So I have this class that I can work with. So in my auth service, I want to pull that in. Uh, actually, it's in the same, I should be able to do it from user like that. Okay, so I'm going to accept a user and this thing can, it doesn't need to return, well, let me think, it does need to return an observable. So I'm going to return an observable and what am I going to do in here? I need to I need to do a post to my login endpoint. Um, so let's think about this for a second. So my login endpoint is this one here, auth slash login. But depending on whether I'm in production or I'm working on my local machine, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be hitting different endpoints. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another environment variable here. So I'm going to I'm going to say that my API URL is this, but my auth URL is HTTP localhost 3000 auth. And in production, it you know, like in production, you might have something totally different. It might be like HTTPS uh, colon slash slash users dot. Um, something like that. So it's configurable. We have uh, an API URL and an auth URL that we want to be able to hit with our auth service. So let's also pull in the environment here. So we'll pull in um, we'll pull in that so that we can use let's let's actually make use of it here. So I'm going to say my URL is equal to my um, auth URL slash login. So whatever it is, it lives at that, like this is the base of that URL slash login. So then when I do my post, I'm going to post to that URL and I'm also going to include the data. So the user data is going to get passed to me on the login method. I'm going to send it in the post that goes to the um, send it in the post that goes up and close that off like that. And it'll go, it, this will go, um, go to my REST API. Now, I wanna move a little bit of code in here to help 
with using authentication. So when you log in, what I'd like to do is I want to return the observable back to the user, but I also would like to be able to um, take a look at what's in there before it goes and maybe act on it. So what I'd like to do here is I'm going to add a pipe to the end of this so that um, what I want to do inside this pipe is I'd like to tap it. So what you can do is you can um, perform some kind of a side effect on this data. So I'm going to give the observable back when they do the login. It's they're going to get back the you know whether it worked or not. But I'm going to take care of setting the token here. So uh, when the when the when the data comes back. I'm going to take a look inside the data and I'm going to say if the data has a token in it, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into local storage. Like that. And I guess I need to pull tap in. So tap, if you're going and looking for this uh, Rx. Tap is documented here. You can see, so I, I need to pull in tap from our XJS operator. So import tap from our XJS operators like that. And couldn't find module user. Why not? Oh, because it's in the same directory. OK. So we have a login method. It takes a user object. It returns an observable, which is going to come back from posting the user data to our login route and when it comes back we're going to inspect and we're going to see if the data coming back has a token we're going to stuff that token into local storage so that we can make use of it okay so let's now write another method to check and see if we are authenticated so our user service knows how to log you in and it also knows how to um, see if you are currently authenticated because we're going to have to check all the time if we are authenticated. So is authenticated returns a Boolean. And what it needs to do is it needs to, um, first of all, try and get the token. So I'm going to say token is equal to this dot get token. And then we'll do a check. So, you know, do we have a token? Because we might not. If we don't have a token, then we're not authenticated. We haven't, you know, like we're not logged in because we don't have a token to use. So if not token, then we're going to return false. Easy. The next thing that I want to do is I want to check to see if the token has expired. Because when we set our token, you'll remember back here when we, where did we do it? We did it in auth. So when we created a token, we specified an expiration. So if the user gets a token and like current, let's say it's three days. So the user gets a token, they use our app, they close their browser, a week later they come back, they're still gonna have a token in local storage, but the token is gonna be expired. So even though they have a token, it's not, it's not useful, like we need to get rid of it. So let's, let's check to see if this token has uh, is still useful. So what we need to do here is we need to say um, is it expired? So we're going to say this dot JWT helper dot is token expired and we'll pass it the token. And that's going to return true or false. So now what we're going to do is so if not expired, then we're authenticated. So we have to just return 
the inverse of this because if it's expired, then we're not authenticated, but we're trying to say, are we authenticated? So is authenticated is gonna be the result of, do we have a token? Is the token still valid? If the token is still valid, then we're authenticated. That looks good. And I guess another thing we could do is we could also make it possible to get user information out of the token. Because remember, our token has a little bit of user information in it. We have a username and we have a display name like this. So one thing we could do is we could write another function here, a method on the, on the authentication service. We could say get user returns a user. And so we could say const token equals this dot get token. So we get the token out of storage. If, uh, if we don't have a token, then we'll return back nothing. Otherwise, um, let's use our helper library again. So you can see that the helper library has a way to decode a token. So if you give it a raw token, you can get back an object. So that's what I wanna do here. So um, I wanna get at the payload. So we'll say, um, payload is equal to this dot JWT helper uh, decode the token like so. So now we have a payload and we can take a look at what's in this payload to construct our um, user. So I'm going to return an object that has everything I know about the user. So the username is going to be whatever. So looking back here, the username is going to be whatever's in the payload, um, the subject of the payload, and then name is the full name. So full name is equal to payload.name, like that. So our service lets us uh, log in to the remote API, get a token, put the token in storage. It lets us check to see if we're already authenticated and it lets us um, work with the user data. And I'm, I'm, I'm working with the token internally, but I don't really wanna work with the token anywhere else. So the only code that really knows about this token is gonna be this service. And then other places where we need to use this service, we can, um, we can uh, call into the service when we need to be able to do it. Um, I think that, I'm trying to think there's anything else I should do here. I think that's good. Okay, save that. Okay, let's think about what's next. So I have a service for doing all this authentication stuff, but I don't have a way to use it. So I think what would be good at this point would be to, let's add a um, another component a login component. And our login component needs to, um, let's, at least basically it's a, we need a, we need a form to log in on. So I think what I'm gonna do in a previous, um, in a previous set of, uh, videos, we use the Angular Material UI components for doing, uh, you know, forms, uh, form fields and so on. So I think I'll, I'll use these again and I'll do that to make my form. So I'm going to use the uh, Angular form components. So let's, let's, let's just write this form. So it's a pretty simple form. So what do we need? We need a form and we need to be able to capture submit like this. So that means that in our component, we're going to, you know, we're going to have an on submit. Um, eventually we'll write the code for on submit. Let's just stub it out like that. Okay. 
so we need to be able to work with a work with a uh, form. So we have a form, and we need to put a few components in here. So let's let's create this. So I'm going to do a mat a material form field, and inside here I'm going to have a, a material label for the username. And I'm also going to have an input element. So the input element is going to be text. And I need to say that that I'm connecting this back to the material, uh, the material angular, angular material. So it's wired up so this input can be used with it. I need to give it a name. So this is username. And I will use the um, I'll use the template driven style of doing this form just, just for something different. So I'll say ng model is going to be equal to uh, user dot username. So I want to be able to work with a user object and the username object, uh, the username property of that object. So that means in my component, I need to pull in the user type from above. And let's think, I need to have a public user of type user. And when, when my component is initialized, let's just instantiate a new user instance like so. So I'm going to have a user object so that I can do data binding into the properties of this user. OK, so my login component is going to uh, the model is going to connect to the uh, user dot username, and this is going to be a required field. And I guess also I should say that I want it to receive focus early. And I think I'm trying to think. I think that's it. So then below that, I need to have another um, mat form field. And I need a label for the password. I need another input. This time the type is going to be password. This is also going to connect material uh, components and the input component so it can use it. I'm going to specify the name is password. I'm going to bind this to my username.password. And this is also going to be required. Like that. And what else do I want to do? I want to, I, I need a place for error messages. So if there's an error, so I need I need a way to deal with errors over here. So back in my component, I need to specify that I could have a string. I could say public error is a string. So that if the error is set, then I'm going to show some kind of error state in my, uh, in my component. So now we can go back and we can use this. So if there's an error, I want to show this. I'll style it and I'll just put in the error text. If there's no error, then I won't show anything. And then I'll put a div in here for working with my button. And I'll throw a button in here. And I want this button to be a submit button. I want it to submit the form. I'm going to use the material button styling. And this will be a login button, like so. And there's my form. OK, um, I'm going to do just a few bits of CSS. So the, the, the component that's hosting this, I'm going to use um, Flexbox. I'm going to justify the content so it's centered 
And I'm also gonna go in the other axis so it's centered too. I'm gonna align the items so that they are also centered like that. And I'll just make this component 100% of the height of the parent. So this thing will stretch and it should center the form in the middle of it. My form fields, I'm gonna make them wider and uh, make sure that they don't go narrower than 300 pixels. Uh, my error, I wanna have um, background color red, color of the text white. Um, put some padding around it and make also make it 300 pixels wide and i guess i want to i want to shift my button over to the side so my uh, button div i want to display flex so that it stretches this and then justify the contents over to the end instead of the start like that Okay, so we've got the, we have the form component and we need to deal with the user clicking on submit. Okay, and we need to deal with getting the error message and putting the error message in. So back in our component, what do we need to do? So I, I need to be able to use my login uh, method from my authorization service. So I'm gonna import that. My authorization service I need. And what I wanna do, uh, let's, pull, let's inject that. So I've got this and, okay. So when the form gets submitted, I wanna grab the auth service and I wanna call login and I wanna pass into my authorization service. You remember when we did login, login takes a user and it's gonna, it's gonna put the user information, the username and password into the body of the post and send that off. So here, um, when I do my login, I'm gonna grab this.user and so the user is gonna go. The form can't be submitted until these required fields are entered. So that should be good. I should have a username and a password already set before the submission takes place. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subscribe to the result that comes back. And um, your subscription can have um, a couple of different, there's a couple of different scenarios of what, what you can do. So you can, you can write a couple of callbacks in here. So I could write one callback if it works. So if it works, then for now, I'll just say console.log, it worked. And in the case of an error, I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna take the error message that I get back and I'm gonna say this dot error is equal to the errors message. So I'll pull the underlying error object off of this thing, get the message and stick that into my, uh, stick that into my error string that I have up here. So it should display, should display this. Okay, I think that's right. So let's think. So when you log in, what do I want to do? When you log in, I want to um, I want to send you somewhere. I want to redirect you to a new location. So probably, if you think about our routing, we have routes for the bridges, the bridges ID. We have all of these different forms that we were working with, but probably what I wanna do, like the main thing I wanna do is probably send you to bridges so that you can, um, you can see all of the bridges that you were trying to hit. So what if I, I'm just thinking, what if I do that? So why don't we pull in, actually let's pull in, 
Um, let's pull in the router. Let's inject it. So the router service is in there. So instead of saying it worked, what if I said, um, what if I navigate you to um, bridges, send you off to this other, other location? And I guess I don't need this. So in the success case, do this. In the failure case, do this. When we subscribe, okay. So now what we should do is we haven't. We should change our. Um, we should change our route so that we have this login, like the login pages. Um, you can you can work with it because uh, right now we don't have a way to get to it. So why don't I pull in. Um, pull in the login component. So pull in the login component and let's define a path for uh, login. And the component will be the login component like that. Okay, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna... I need to rebuild here. Okay, this, this compile, but I have errors. So my login component doesn't, it's property username does not exist on, uh, because it's user. So let me change, this should be, yeah, this should be user. Fix that. Okay, that compiled. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna refresh this page and you can see couple things happening already. You can see that it's hitting my um, bridges and getting 401s, which is interesting. Um, let's, they're not working. So you can see over here, you can see a, the 401s getting hit. You can see that the bridges worked. So I have my list of bridges. That one was fine, but this one over here, these ones aren't working. So let's go, let's try our login form. So if I go to login, how does this look? Good, so we have a we have a login form now and let's try logging in. So I'm gonna log in as um, Dave and password, I'll use the wrong password, ABC, and I click login and let's see what happens. Login failed. So you can see that down here, I've got a 401 coming back from the post on my web service and it's received, um, let's just have a look. You can see the login request here. So the response that comes back, I get message login failed and um, that's what's displaying in my, in my form. So now let's try doing this. Let's do secret one, two, three and I'll click log in and that one worked. So now I'm able to receive this. So let's figure out why this works. So if you, if we take a look at the application, in the application tab, you can see all of the different storage for this domain, for this origin. And the one that I'm interested in is local storage. And inside local storage, I have an, I have basically have a database for each origin. So this origin is localhost 4200 on HTTP. So if I click on this, 
you'll see all of the key value pairs that are available here. And you can see that my token is here. So the token was put into, so just remembering how this worked, my, my authorization, my auth service, when I did a login, it posted the user data and then it, it took a look at the response. And if there was a token in the response, it put the token inside of local storage. And my app module has this extra JWT module that's been connected in. And so it's intercepting HTTP re requests that are going out to my API URL. And it's looking inside of local storage for something called token. So if token is there, so the way that, you know, like if I were to do this, um, local storage dot get item token, there it is token comes back and that's how it's working. So it's automatically adding that token. So let's see if that's true. So when I go to, um, like if I click on one of these bridges, let's say this bridge right here, that worked. So if I click on this, let's look at the headers. Um, where is my request header? Here it is right here, look at this. So you can see that the HTTP interceptor has added the authorization bearer token. And then here is the, here's the token that's been uh, added into the request. So when the server receives that, the verification server, um, the verification function inside my REST API, it's going to pull that off of the header. It's going to use the secret to confirm, like to check that the data in the payload and the header matches what it should, like when it was originally signed. And then it's gonna give me the payload and let me see if the user exists and so on and so on. And then it lets me, it lets me go through and do this. So if I click on these, uh, my map isn't loading. Why is my map not loading? There it goes. So this is all working now. I can use the app. I'm authenticated. I'm logged in. Everything works. Now, if I were to go here, if I were to delete this token, so if I delete this token, if I click on another one of these things, you can see that I'm going to get, um, I'm getting 401s, 401 errors here. And I think it's doing multiple requests because I think I have my data service I think my data service is set up to retry failed. So I'm gonna get rid of these. I'll get rid of the retries so that it doesn't do, um, it doesn't do multiple failed attempts. So you can see that like this, uh, if I click on one of these, it's, it's just gonna get 401s. So this is, this is pretty good, but I've got, I still have one improvement that I could make. And that is, this route that I'm currently hitting, which is, let's just go find it, in my, in my routes in Angular, we're talking about this route right here. This route is really only useful if you're authenticated. So I don't actually want to allow users to go to it if they haven't been authenticated. I would rather have a flow where if you tried to go to this route and you aren't authenticated, instead what happens is you get redirected to the login component. So we can do this. Angular does this um, with what are called route guards. So we need to add a guard, which is essentially a function that figures out whether or not a particular path or a route can be activated, like whether or not it's legitimate to go there. So I'm gonna, let's write one of these things. So I'm gonna add um, ng generate a new kind of thing. This is called a guard. So I'm gonna write a guard and I'm gonna write a guard for, um, I'll just call it bridge guard. So it says, you know, what, what, what do you want to implement here? I'm going to use can activate. So my bridge guard, I have a bridge guard right here. And I'm going to simplify a bunch of this code. Okay. 
Okay, so let me, t let me just walk you through this. Essentially what I want to do here is, um, I need to return, okay, think about this. I need, so return true if and only if uh, the user is authenticated. Otherwise, return false. So I need a way to check if the user is currently authenticated or not. Now, the good thing is I've already written this. So we have code over here in the um, authentication service that checks to see if a user is authenticated, which means do we have a token? If we have a token, is the token expired or is it still valid? If it's still valid, then for all intents and purposes, we're authenticated or at least we could try uh, hitting it. Okay, so let's... Let's use that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import my authentication service. Uh, no, where is it? It's here. Auth service, yes. So I'm gonna pull in my auth service. I'm gonna inject it into this. So I'm gonna say constructor um, private auth, auth service, like so, uh, whoops, like that. And why are you unhappy with me? Parameter properties on Atlanta constructor. Yeah, uh, that is a constructor. All right, I'll come back to this. So what I want to do inside this function is I want to use, I want to use the, um, I want to use this auth service. I want to check. So I want to say if, um, if I'm not authenticated, so auth dot is, authenticated. So if the user is not authenticated, then I'm going to return false. Otherwise, I'll return true. Um, but let's think about this. If they're not authenticated, I actually would like to send them to the login page. So let's pull in the router again too. So I'm going to import the router. Um, pull in the router and what I can do before I return false here, I can say, um, let's think, uh, this dot router dot navigate. So I'm going to navigate to the login route like that, and then I will return false. So the, the way this guard is going to function is that we're going to only allow a route to be activated if the user is authenticated, return true. But if they're not authenticated, we're not going to allow them to go there, and we're going to reroute them to the login page. Okay, that looks good. So now inside of our routing module, what we can do here is we can add this guard, this bridge guard to a couple of our routes. So let's, let's go to the routing module and let's import our guard. So whoops, bridge guard. So think about which one of these routes I want to guard. Now, really what I'm doing here is not dissimilar to what we did up here inside of our bridges. So you remember what we did with Passport inside the REST API. We said we have a route bridges ID 
and this is the function that is going to be called. Well, in Angular, instead of a function, you have a component that needs to get rendered inside the router outlet. What we're going to do here is we're going to add extra an extra check basically before you get to this function to see if you've properly authenticated using the JWT strategy. So now inside of our um, Angular code, inside the routing module, I'm going to identify a couple of routes that I want to be protected. So basically, these bridge, these two bridges routes are the ones that I I would like to um, I would like to be protected. So here's how I do it. I'm I'm going to add a third argument to the list here. So I'm gonna I'll just break this up, and it's actually I'll, I'll write it similarly to what I did up with. Um, Um, can activate is equal to bridge guard. Bridges. Okay. So what we have now is we have two routes which have an additional, it's kind of like middleware, right? Like it's an extra check to see whether or not you can go to this, like whether or not you can activate this route um, before you do it, it's going to check. So it's going to use BridgeGuard to figure out whether or not you're allowed to do this. So if I save this, my compiler, I got to recompile. So right now, let's just take a look. Inside application, you notice that I don't have I don't have a token. Local storage. Um, local storage will survive the user reloading the page. So if if the token is in there, even if they close the browser or they hit reload or whatever they do, that token will still be available. But in this case, I don't have a token. So what's gonna happen now is when this thing loads. What it should do is it should see that it it wants to go to the bridges. Like if you, I'll clear this and show you. But if I if I redirect to bridges, when I go to bridges, it's going to check to see if it's allowed to activate this route, and it's not. And you can see here what's happened. So it has activated the guard, and what the guard does is it says if you're not authenticated then I'm going to not allow you to activate this route and I'm also going to navigate you to uh, the, login, the login route. So now if I go here and if I say Dave secret one, two, three, and I hit login, you can see that the token got added to local storage and it means that if I click on one of these other bridges, my map, my network is not happy with me today. Let me refresh. So if I refresh, this token is still gonna be here. Yeah, there you can see it's fine. So the token survived the refresh. I don't have to log in, but if I, if I get rid of this token, if I do this and if I refresh this page, it's gonna take me to the login page because it's not allowed it's not allowed to hit that route um, without the token. And you can see over here in my server, all the different endpoints being hit. Sometimes they work, sometimes they're 200s, sometimes they're 401, depending on whether or not the user is, is allowed, to, uh, allowed to do that, allowed to make those changes. Okay, so this is a good place to wrap it up. Um, lots of different concepts here. And I would say security is a big topic you could spend like an entire course, an entire program, we have programs uh, on just on doing security. And uh, it's there's a lot to it. So what we did today was we started to introduce you to some of the concepts, in this case, using JSON web tokens to be able to secure everything from a REST API all the way through to a single page app in Angular, or if we were doing React, it would be very similar. 
we would, um, the idea of JSON web token is not specific to Angular or React, or it's, you can reuse this in all different um, security settings when you're doing web applications. So I'll put this code up and I'll put it up in the auth uh, branch and I'll link to it in the videos and it'll be on GitHub. And for you, work your way through it and try and get this kind of authentication added into your, uh, into your systems and make sure you can figure out how all the different pieces of it work.